we are going to be talking about the Schmidt trigger. Now the Schmidt trigger is very similar to the comparator. However, it does offer a couple advantages that we're going to see as we go through the problem. Before we get into this, a couple things to keep in mind is that we can't analyze this circuit using the ideal assumptions we typically make. Namely, the output voltage is equal to the gain of the op amp A, typically a large number like 10 to the 5, multiplied by the difference of the positive input minus the negative input. So that's how we calculate the output voltage. But we also have to remember that the op amp will saturate at its rail voltages. In this case, I have a positive 10 and a negative 10, and that's going to be the absolute limit of the upper value of my op amp, as well as the lower value of my op amp. The last thing I need to mention is that the Schmidt trigger has something called hysteresis, and that just means that the previous state is influencing the current state. So we have to make an assumption about the state of the circuit in order to begin analyzing it. So we're going to assume that the output voltage, VO, is going to start at 10 volts, and we have this here on our graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to plot the output voltage as a function of the input voltage using our assumptions about how this op amp works. So we're given an initial value of V out is equal to 10 volts here. So our op amp is saturating at the positive rail. So if V O is equal to 10, we can calculate the value of V T using the voltage divider equation. Being that we have two 10 K resistors, we're going to get an equal voltage drop across both of them. And our V T value that we have here on the positive input of our op amp is going to be equal to five volts. So let's draw in the V T value for our circuit. So V T value is going to be right here and this is going to be VT, and this is equal to 5 volts. So now let's take the value of VT and VI and put that into our op amp equation up here. So if V plus is VT, and that's equal to 5 volts, and VI is less than 5 volts, then the expression inside the parentheses is going to be a positive number. So long as this is a positive number, that number multiplied by A is going to be a large positive number. So VO is going to remain at 10 volts as long as VT is greater than VI. So that's going to continue all the way up until this point right here. So right here, VI becomes greater than VT. If VI is greater than VT, that would mean that the negative value becomes larger than the positive value within these parentheses, meaning that this term is going to become a very large negative number. And that saturates our op amp to the negative rail. So now the output voltage is going to drop all the way to negative 10. So when the output of the op amp goes down to negative 10, the value of VT is going to change. When VO is equal to negative 10, VT becomes negative 5. So now VT is down here, and it's going to remain at negative 5 until the point at which VI becomes less than VT. When VI becomes more negative than VT, then this term is going to be a positive number, and this is going to be larger than the V plus and make this expression within the parentheses a positive value that saturates our op amp back to 10 volts. So now the output becomes positive 10, and VT correspondingly changes back to 5 volts. Now that we've seen how the Schmidt trigger behaves, let's compare this to how a standard comparator works. For the comparator, every time that VI crosses that constant reference voltage, V out changes state. Now you might be thinking this is fine, and in some cases it is. However, one thing you'd want to be aware of is electrical noise in your circuit. Now, quite often, your signals are noisy, so instead of having this clean blue line, your signal may look like this. So now we're crossing V reference all over the place, and at each one of those crossings, the output voltage is going to change state and be flipping back and forth between high and low values. And this isn't ideal. So if we were to do the same thing for our Schmidt trigger and add some electrical noise on top of our signal, so maybe it looks like this now, it doesn't cause the output voltage to change state. So it's not going to force this to switch from a high to a low on our Schmidt trigger, however it would for a comparator. The noise induced switching on the comparator is called chatter and the Schmidt trigger is much more immune to that than a standard comparator would be. So this is one of the big advantages of the circuit over a comparator. The next major advantage that the Schmidt trigger has over the comparator is the rate at which the output can switch. So I drew this as kind of a square wave, and generally it does kind of look like a square wave for the output voltage when it switches. However, nothing changes exactly instantaneously. Really, there's a little bit of a curve to this line, and it's not a perfect square wave. However, the Schmidt trigger circuit enables faster switching than would otherwise be achieved with a standard comparator. So what the Schmidt trigger does to increase the switching speed beyond that of a comparator 
is something called positive feedback. And by linking the output back to the positive terminal, it causes the expression within the parentheses to grow in value. So that way you get a larger value of V out when you calculate this. So what this looks like is right here when we have our VI become greater than VT and it causes this transition. Soon as VI becomes greater than VT, VT starts changing and VT goes down to negative five volts. So as VT becomes more negative, the value within this expression becomes larger as that difference grows. And that's what positive feedback does in this circuit. Generally, the Schmidt trigger has two primary advantages over the standard comparator. The first is that it's more noise immune because you have this changing trigger voltage that shifts between these two threshold values. And the second is that it transitions faster due to the positive feedback on the op-amp. 